Hey folks, I just uh, want to jump right in today. I want to have you turn to two places, uh, Philippians chapter 2 and 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 2, we're going to start there uh, and just put a mark in Corinthians, uh, for, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And while you're getting that set up uh, with your Bible, uh, I'm going to start us with, with a word of prayer. And Lord, I just want to thank you again for another opportunity, uh, Lord, to put a video out here. And I, I just hope and pray that, Lord, you'll use it, that you'll speak through me, that you'll get myself out of the way, and uh, that you would uh, speak to the hearts of those that are listening and watching, and uh, that you would do your work in all of our hearts today, uh, and um, that you would just, just, just have your will and your way in all that's said and done, Lord, and that this message that's so important that I want to get forth today. And we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Philippians uh, chapter 2. We're going to start there. And I'm going to read verses 9 through 11. It says, Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The title of my message uh, in this video is the question of, Is Jesus your Lord? Is Jesus your Lord today? If Jesus is not your Lord, He's not your Savior. If you accepted Jesus as your Savior, but it didn't transform you, it didn't make you a new creature, you didn't get Jesus, you just got religion. And that's what I want to talk about today. On April 12th, 1987, 14 years old, I did all the right things. I went to church. I asked about membership. I listened to the gospel and paid close attention as a youth director walked me through it. Then I got down on my knees. I prayed a prayer and was welcomed into the family of God. After that, I did everything I was told. I became a faithful church member. I joined the youth group. I joined the youth choir. I read, I read my Bible lots of times. And I prayed a lot, especially when I was in trouble or, or needed something. I went to Bible college. I learned everything I needed to know there. I ran a bus ministry, taught Sunday school. I went through all the motions. I was a choir director, a preacher, a pastor in training. I even started a church out of my home. My experience, this experience that I'm talking to you about as a teenager, it changed me in many ways. I cleaned up my language, mostly. I talked a lot about Jesus and the Bible. And I told lots of people that they would go to hell if they didn't get saved. I even felt guilty when I did something that I knew was a sin. Fast forward 31 years. 31 years. It's September 2018. And I've been wrestling with God for months. The anger, the selfishness, the appetite for dark things, emotional experiences, and the pride. All those things that I had on April 12, 1987, I still had all of them on April 13th. And they were still all very much a part of my life on September 17th, 2018. And I was arguing with God in my heart, because now after three decades, he's showing me a trail of tears behind me. A life of bitterness and destruction that damaged people, ended a marriage, and scarred my children. But I'm saying, wait a minute, God, that, that, that prayer was heartfelt, and I, I, really, I really did feel sorry for all that stuff. And I... I uh, uh, um, what about all the Bibles I marked up with my study notes? And all the kids that I brought to church? What about all the preaching and teaching and that handful of people that I led in a sinner's prayer over the years? When I finally stopped ranting for a minute, two words came out of the quiet. Filthy rags. Isaiah 64, 6, But we are all as an unclean thing, and all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags, and we all do fade as a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, have taken us away. 
On September 17th, 2018, God literally woke me up with the truth. I didn't have Jesus. I had religion. Religion is not about Jesus. It's about piety. It's about formality. It's about the letter of the law. It's about a futile effort to establish your own righteousness. To earn God's favor and your own power. Religion is not about being conformed to the image of Christ. It's about creating God in your own image. When you declare with a genuine heart that Jesus Christ is not only your Savior, but your Lord, that is when you become, or you come, into His marvelous light. That is when new life begins. That is when your loyalty truly changes from self to your Savior. When Jesus is your Lord, you have a few things that are evidence that that is true in your life. And the first one is His light. You have His light. We're back in, or going to 2 Corinthians chapter 4 now. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 where I had you make a mark. I'm going to read verses 5 through 9 right now. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. 1 John, 5, uh, 1 John 1, 5 through 7, tells us God is light. In Him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with Him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light, as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanseth us from all sin. If you're not walking in light, Jesus is not your Lord. If you are walking in darkness, Jesus is not your Lord. Your walk is your lifestyle. What does your walk say about you? Do you gravitate toward the light? If you ever drift toward the darkness, does God correct your course? back toward the light. If you're truly walking in the light, you will stand out in a room full of darkness. When His light shines in your heart, you have power. Not your own power, but God's. When His light is shining in you and through you, no matter how much trouble there is on every side, you will not be distressed. No matter how perplexing the world becomes, you will not be in despair. When you are living in the light of Christ the Lord, He will indeed be your Savior. You will be persecuted, but not forsaken. You may even be cast down, but you will never be destroyed. If Jesus is your Lord, your way of life will be one of walking in His light. And you'll also have the second thing, His life. His life. Back in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, I'm going to read 10 through 14 now, verses 10 through 14. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. So then death worketh in us, but life in you. We, having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed, and therefore have I spoken. We also believe, and therefore speak, knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus, and shall present us with you. If Jesus is my Lord, I am dead. But He is alive in me and lives through me. My way of life is one of service to Him. And when I stray from His life, 
He shows me where the light is. I am, I'm tethered to him. Galatians 2.20 tells me that the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. If Jesus is your Lord, you will have his light and his life. But you'll also have the third thing, his loyalty. His loyalty. In Philippians 2, back to Philippians 2 where we started, I'm going to read verses 9 through 11 once again. It says, Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name, which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. If Jesus is not your Lord, he is not your Savior. Because you cannot have his light or his life unless he is your Lord. Likewise, his lordship of your life is required in order to have his loyalty. When I talk about his loyalty, I'm I'm not simply talking about uh, his loyalty to you, though it is true that a born-again believer is secure in Christ. But I'm also talking about the power that Jesus gives you to be loyal to him. In fact, when Jesus becomes your Lord, he's the one that gives you his light. And he's the one that gives you his life. Likewise, he's the one that gives you loyalty to him. You can't do it on your own power. If Jesus is your Lord, you cannot help but be loyal to him. If not in the moment, then certainly at the end of the day. When you step off the path, does your loyalty bring you back? If, if it does not, you better examine yourself. Because a true believer who has Jesus as his Lord walks in the light as he is in the light. He has the life of Jesus and hence the loyalty of a follower of Jesus. Is Jesus your Lord today? If not, he can be. If you're not sure how to know for sure that Jesus is your Lord, that you have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ, and that heaven will be your home when you die. If you're not sure of these things, please contact me. I want to help you. John at johnclawton.org. You can get further information at my website, johnclawton.org. Again, please contact me if I can help you in any way. John at johnclawton.org. Thank you for watching, and have a great day.